Welcome back to another episode of Boomer Bus. I'm your host, Terry, back on the mic. It's been a while, but uh, we are going to do the edge rushers. Um, man, it's been, y'all don't even know, it's been hectic. But I'm glad to finally finish this group. Uh, not edge rushers, but edge players, sorry. But I'm glad to finally finish this group. Want to uh, continue to get this rolling and try to be done with the first round of evaluations pretty soon. Um Spring break is coming up, so hopefully I can get some uh, time to knock these things out before the combine comes up. Anyway, um, so we're going to do the real grade for the Philadelphia Eagles at the end of this, so stick around for that. Um, Also, again, if you want to look at the uh, actual reports as constituted right now, there's a link in the description section that takes you to the Google Drive with those. So anyway. Uh, so we're talking about the edge now. I have adopted the terminology, which I think is fair. Um, the whole interior offensive lineman, offensive tackle, because the interior is just so interchangeable. And defensively, which is more important, the interior D lineman and the edge players, uh, because the whole three, four outside linebacker thing, the whole they stand up, they don't stand up, the whole three, four DN thing. It was just too much for people. I think for people that are coaches and that are into the game, we still know the nuances and differences and we could talk about it. But for everyone that's casual, I think interior edge is just, it helps people to realize what we're talking about. So uh, we, we, Combined, what I would traditionally do is defensive ends, and I would do three, four, or I would call them edge rushers. I would do them separately because I do think you definitely have it's a different, little bit of a difference in skill set. But I'm combining those two together. So anybody that played on the edge will be here. Anybody that's a three, four DN defensive tackle knows whatever they'll be interior. So that's what we'll be doing. All right, so I'm going to talk about the top guys, and then. I'm going to talk about a couple of the guys that are not in the top, and yeah, we'll go through the real grade. So, as far as what I'm looking for, when I'm talking about an edge player, um, the gradable traits that I look at, number one is to get off. Um, what's your ability to get off the ball uh, when the ball is snapped? That is probably one of the most important. I would probably say, I would probably say number one. Well, yeah, I would say number one, as far as that gives you an advantage, you can still be a good pass rusher. And we'll, we talk about the run, but a lot of this is about pass rush. You can be a good pass rusher without a good first step, but you'll never be great. I don't think so. Get off is one. I grade closing speed is one that I grade uh, as far as. Uh, This is one I got from linebackers as well. Just what's your ability to close on a player? Um, So some people can be explosive off the ball, but just not fast chasing people down or any of that. So closing speed is one that helps you know what the player's range is. Motor, that's a huge, huge, that's top three skills. If you watch my um, all, not all American, (laughs) my all pro series for the nfl the video breakdowns you know the number one thing i tell you is motor and i mean on defense that's what it is motor is probably the biggest thing that separates all pros from regular players and then hand technique very big as well uh, there's a lot of athletes that obviously can win without using their hands in college game but you gotta at some point be able to use your hands unless you're an elite freak you got to be able to use your hands and get off blocks. So those are the four things I grade. And then uh, I've been adding stats. Like I've said, if you've been following, I've been adding stats uh, to some of these. And for what I looked at on the edge, I looked at career tackle for losses, career sacks, and career force fumbles. Um, kind of those disruptive plays that uh, let you know what uh, what type of production they've had. Because I'm not huge in the stats, as you know, but I do think they can inform the conversation. And so I usually in college, I'm like, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter because it doesn't always translate. You know, like the Heisman winner, the best receiver winner, the best lineman winner, like they don't always become good players. So 
It doesn't always translate for production, but it does help you kind of think about things. So anyway, that's what I've added. All right. So with all that, let's take a look at Chase Young, who is considered the number one prospect in this draft. And I would agree. So um, I mentioned this in the community not too long ago. Um I usually start off with a quick glimpse at all the top players, like the top 30 or so, to see what type of talent level we got. And when I watched Chase Young, uh, I had some questions. I could obviously see a lot of the upside. I saw a lot of the athleticism. I saw what people liked. But in the short amount of time I got to watch, I was like, okay, I got some questions. Because some people pop off the screen for potential and... Some people discount too much how much um, growth they might need or they discount who they're playing against and all that. Like for me, I think I just saw a difference between what he was doing against Michigan State versus like a Clemson. And we know like Big Ten, especially Michigan State, they got some big boys, some power guys, some guys that know how to block. And so usually things like that raise a red flag for me. But I watched Chase Young in its entirety. Uh, let's see. I marked down five games. Actually, that reminds me. I need to mark everybody's games that I watch. But I watched five games. Questions answered. This dude's legit. It's not a lot that I even need to talk about. I mean, he's 6'5", 265 is what they got. We'll see what he weighs in at the combine. Doesn't really look it. I mean, and that's the thing people got to realize. Like, some of these guys, they're like, like Curtis Weaver from Boise State. Big dude. On paper, they say he weighs the same as uh, Chase Young. So everybody's built differently. So he's built like a freak. Uh, you can stand him up off the edge. You can um, hand in the dirt, uh, regular 4-3 or four, four-point stance, whatever you want. You can put him off in the coverage. You could do a lot of things. Dude is a freaky athlete. Uh, and he dropped into coverage sometimes. Um, and the thing I look at when guys go into coverage is how well do they move, number one, and number two, how aware are they? Most of the time, and I mean 99% of the time, players aren't aware. Uh, these guys just drop to where they tell them to drop, and they don't really know what's going on. But uh, the number one thing for me is how well they move because then that lets me know how well you can teach them to actually uh, cover the space correctly. So he moves extremely well, uh, pretty much like a linebacker or a safety. So there you go. Uh, setting the edge, like the only thing I – so setting the edge, and uh, in case you don't know what that means, so uh, like I've always said, like if you're on the edge, um, you're the end man on the line of scrimmage, and they want to kind of reach you, you want to keep your outside shoulder free uh, towards the sideline because – if you are open, then you can make that tackle. Otherwise, the offensive player has to bounce back inside and go back towards the defense where you got help. So very important. But there's a lot of guys that aren't good at setting the edge or don't understand how to. Um, what happens is some people turn their shoulders a little too much. And I always say it's kind of like basketball, like you're boxing out for a rebound. That's how you want it. You want that arm free. You want to be able to be in a nice sit in position so they can't block you um but some people turn their shoulders inside trying to look at the play and now once the uh, offensive player runs past you you can't turn around and you lost the edge there so yeah uh but i think he was great at it very stout hard to move um i think he keeps his arm free knows what he's doing the only issue with him i think he pen he's a penetrator he's explosive he likes to go upfield so it's not that uh, he wasn't wide enough with the edge. Sometimes he just came up field too much, and that created a natural gap inside. So there's something he just got to control how much he penetrates. And he's definitely going to be a guy people want to screen against, let him come up field, and then throw the screen behind him. But, you know, you could coach that. Uh, so uh, I like his stack and shed. He's got violent hands. That's one thing I like about Chase Young. Um, he's not just, you know, that Ferrari. He, he's actually got a lot of muscle to him as well. Um, not the best at it, but pretty good. And stack and shed, again, is just taking. Uh, so if a lineman's trying to block you, instead of getting blocked, you attack them with your hands as well. 
get your hands in their chest so you can control them. And if you lock your arms out, lock your elbows, then you are stacking, which means you're setting him up to a point where you got your extension. And now you can make a move. You can go left or right, or you can try to ragdoll them and throw them. But you're stacking them up so then you can shed and get off the block. So I think he's good at that. Uh, really, I mean, his strength is great. His functional strength is crazy. But a lot of times he does like to run around blocks, which you kind of see from linebackers, like stack linebackers that are small. They like to run around blocks instead of uh, shedding them. Uh, yeah, in the run game, I, I don't think he looks to get off blocks too often. I think he's just fast enough to run around them. But you, I would like to get him in the mindset of actually – uh, using his hands to get off blocks. Uh, and he plays standing up almost all the time. That's the other thing I don't like about him. Uh, and obviously, he's still able to do what he needs to do, but I think he'd be even better if he wasn't standing up. So running the arc, uh, I think he's great. I think he's super fast. He has a good pass. His feet stay towards the quarterback. He just needs to lower his pad level a little bit and he'll be unstoppable. You're talking about a guy like a Robert Quinn is the best guy I've seen coming around the edge on the arc. You know, when you just lean that well and you get that low, it's impossible to block you. Uh, excellent body lean and body dip. Like I said, when he wants to actually put it together and he can, it's darn near impossible to block him. Getting low, leaning the body, tight to the quarterback's uh, pocket is, is hard. Uh, excellent pass rush. Excellent ability to win on the edge. I talk, or I actually said elite ability to win on the edge. So for me, I started grading that last year because, again, people look at these sack numbers and they're just like, oh, this person's this and that. And I try to tell you all the time, it's not about what you do, it's how you do it. You doing a twist and a stunt and making a sack is not the same as you beating a tackle off the edge one-on-one in two and a half seconds and making a sack. Those are two different skill sets. And so I see a lot of players, like in the NFL, people get hyped and I go to the tape and I'm like, almost every sack has been on a blitz or a stunt. And like that, that doesn't make you a good pass rusher. Like, that's part of it, but it's like, if you ask me, hey, do you want to draft this guy that's really good at stunts, getting a sack off a stunt, or do you really want to get this guy that's whooping everybody one-on-one -on -one in double teams? Like, that's not a question. So, his ability to win on the edge is elite. Uh, he's so explosive that it causes too much trouble for the tackles, and on top of that, he's really strong. So when he you're that fast and that big, you generate a lot of power. So he can beat you off speed. He can beat you with speed to power. He's got good hands. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, yeah, so I like I said, good counters, um, good hands, good explosion, all that. And he's difficult to block on the interior. So sometimes they'll uh, blitz him up the middle or they'll do a stunt. And like those guys are too big to block him. He's too fast for them. Uh, so, yeah, I gave him a level five get off. Level five closing speed. Four and a half motor. Sometimes when the play is away, he won't chase it. And I gave him a four and a half hand technique. So this dude's supreme supreme talent and i heard people saying this before and i didn't agree but I, I think i agree now this is a better prospect than um miles garrett this is a better prospect than uh jadavian Clowney or any of those guys uh as far as the prospects so you're talking about over 30 career sacks in 34 games 40 career tfls dudes legit all right so K. Levon Ch 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 Chason, I don't know how to say his name, from LSU. I'm not a big fan of him. I know a lot of people were, and I, I just, I was not. The number one thing with him to me is his hips are too stiff. And again, I've said this before, people confuse that you being fast or quick means you have good hips, and it's not true. You can have stiff hips and still run fast because you're going in a straight line. But your change of direction isn't great. And I think that's what really hurts him. That and he's a little undersized. Like 250 is a good size, but he's not functionally strong. And so 
a couple places that hurts him is his ability to stack and shed. Like when he's trying to get off a block, it just seems to me like it takes a lot of effort for him to get off a block. So if a guy's uh, locked in on him or if he, they're holding him or whatever and he's uh, engaged, him trying to disengage just seemed like it took a lot more effort than it does a lot of these other guys. So it just seemed like he doesn't have that functional strength. And the same thing in his pass rush. He His pass rush gets stopped really easily. And so um, this is a guy that just has to get stronger. And so then on top of that, I just think his body lean, his ability to lean around the arc is just very average, average to above average. His path is too wide. It's not tight to the quarterback. It's too wide, so it's easy to push him out of the way. And his hips are stiff, so he doesn't lean well. So he doesn't get underneath the pads, and it's easy to ride him out of the pocket. And so... Uh, it, it's interesting. Like I said, I think he, so I usually look at lean and dip, dip, you know, the ability to actually lower your body, get under a pad. And I, I think he can do that. He's shown times he could really dip under a block, which is really nice. But the fact that he can't lean around the edge shows you that he has stiff hips. Cause usually people have decent hips where they can lean, but they they can't get low, especially taller guys. They can't get low. And so even if they lean well, they're too high up. And so it's just not as effective. But with uh, Kay Levon, like he can get low, but you can see he doesn't lean well. And that lets me know his hips are pretty stiff. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, another thing, he has a number of moves that he showed, but he's not good at any of them. Like, or he's not great at any one move. He's just good at a number of moves. And if you're going to step up to the NFL, those good moves are going to be okay moves. So you got to get great at something. And I don't like his handwork. Uh, so I say he has the average ability to win on the edge. Um, he's got to get better at speed to power. He wants to win with speed, but he's not super fast. And even if he was... A lot of tackles start to overset him and just uh, kick him back really far to cut him off. And he never countered well or he never had a good speed to power conversion. So you look at his career sacks, um, 24 games, nine and a half career sacks. And again, I'm not huge on the stats, but that does speak to what I saw on film. 19 career TFL, so not huge production. And just watching him play, like I, yeah, I, I don't, I wouldn't take this guy before the third round. Like uh, I know he's top fifteen, top twenty talk, but honestly, I don't really see it with him. I gave him a three and a half get off, uh, four closing speed, straight line, four and a half motor, really gets after it, and definitely a leader. Not saying he doesn't have qualities, but I gave him a level three hand technique. All right, so AJ. A pen, a pen, a peninsa. I just looked this up before I started recording. Epeninza, Epeninza, Epeninza. Let's say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> out of Iowa, six six two eighty. Um, second team All AP All American. Chase Young was first team All American. Uh, yeah. So you talking about elite dude? I think a guy that has a very particular skill set as a power DN and or an even front. Uh, well, I guess you really could have him play, uh, you could have him play as a 3-4 DN in a scheme that moves a lot, but for me, I just think the even front be his best, uh, kind of a right side DN. Uh, I think he's pretty fluid though. Like if you wanted to stand him up and put him as like an elephant in the odd front, which is a glorified DN. Uh, I can see that, but honestly, I think he's best with his hand in the dirt. Um, yeah, never really dropped into coverage, but uh, all the power stuff he's great at. Uh, setting the edge, I think he's absolutely great. Knows his leverage, knows where to be, knows how to uh, make the play bounce back inside. Great ability to stack and shed, like very, very functionally strong. 
knows how to control the linemen and throw them away and get off blocks. Really uh, is good at shedding blocks. Um, great pad level for a guy that's six six. I mean, he plays with a lot of leverage, and you usually don't see that uh, with a lot of players, uh, let alone six six players. Um, now the finesse part is not so great. His body lean is average. Him running the arc is average. Um, I think he he aims tight to the quarterback. Uh, he he likes to go on a tight path, but since he doesn't lean well, it's still a little easy to get him out of the pocket. Not easy, but easier. If he was able to really lean on the edge, then it'd be a you know tougher gig. Um, but I still like him as a pass rusher. Um, power moves again. If you got a quarterback that's not mobile, he's really going to feast. I think the guys that work the pocket well and the quarterbacks that are mobile really gave him issues because he doesn't redirect well. He's kind of a straight line guy, and that goes to him not being able to lean. Um, he'll come up the field high on a rush, but once the play gets away, he doesn't redirect well at all. He's kind of going where he's going. <laughs> and so, uh, guys that just sit there in the pocket, he's going to kill those guys. And I think, yeah, like he's grown man strong. So I, I think as a power rusher, he'll be really good. Um, and overall, I just like his technique. I like his technique. I actually like his ability to win on the edge. I think, again, he uses extension well to set up his power moves and he's got decent counters, but, um, he's not going to be like a pass rush, you know, maven as they call him. So. Uh, three and a half get off, three and a half closing speed, four motor, four and a half hand technique. So, uh, built for power. Um, very hardworking guy. He reminds me of like kind of the guys that play for Vikings. Um, he's not a freak like Daniil Hunter. Um, but what's the other one's name? I'm forgetting his name right now, but that, those are kind of DNs he remind me of. But yeah, good production. I mean, 36 and a half or 36 career TFLs, 26 and a half career sacks. So uh, good production. And he's played 37 games. So he's up there. Uh, so moving over to Yitor Gross Matos. Really like this dude. At first, uh, and I, I know, like they said, he's still kind of newer to football uh, comparatively. And. He's uh, growing into his position. And so, you know, 6'5", 250 plus, DN, I'm like, okay, he's kind of one of those uh, project guys that's all potential. No. I mean, he, he is, I think, still scratching the surface, but he's not all potential. He has a lot more solid foundation than I thought he did. Um, and a lot of it is due to his athletic gifts. So you're talking about a guy who I think is a, a even front edge rusher. He could be a stand-up guy with 6'5". He's pretty big. I would, I'd rather have him hand in the dirt. But you talk about a guy that really is great at setting the edge, uh, similar to Epinenza and, um, that I was just talking about, understands the leverage, hard to move, keeps his arm free, really well coached. Uh, I like his stack and shed. Um I think he's strong enough to stack linemen. He's more of a guy that's looking to get off the block quick, so he's not trying to engage. So he's really trying to get uh, uh, off the block as quick as possible, which I'm not mad at. I like Penetrator. So um, to me, that's a good skill as well as far as stacking shedding. Um, he can play with leverage as a 6'5 guy when he tries to, but it, it's good. But it's not great. And I understand 6'5, so he's he tend to stand up. Um, I like his ability around the arc and I like his lean. I think they both can improve, but they're much better than I expected that to be for a guy that size. He's really long, long limbs. Um, and he still has a good ability to use his hips to get around the edge. It's not as consistent, but I was shocked to even see it. And so, you know, he can do it. So now it's just about making him consistent. Uh, I like him as a, a pass rusher. I say he's very good. I like his speed, the power moves. Um, and is one thing I noticed with a couple of these guys, they understand when to counter back. Like I was just talking about with uh, Epinesa from Iowa. He kind of doesn't know when to go back. He just kind of goes with where he's going. 
there's a couple guys that really understand when the edge is lost and they counter back in well. And not everybody has a natural feel of the pocket like that. Uh, I think uh, Yitor is one of those guys that knows when to uh, convert the counter and go back inside. So I like that as well. And, you know, I like his hands overall. So for me, I gave him a four. Level four get off, level four closing speed, level four motor, and a level four hand technique. Um, I do think he's more of a project than these other guys, but I think he's going to be really, really good. So those are the main guys. Uh, there's a lot of names out there. I'm trying to see. Uh, I'll just real quick talk about. So Josh Uchi, I believe, from Michigan. I I think he has to be a stack linebacker. I see his name in a lot of stuff. I don't see it on tape, like, at all. He's not a good pass rusher. I think he's a guy that could be a stack backer, and you put him on the edge for, like, third downs and blitzes and move him around. But I don't see him as an edge rusher. Just too undersized. Um, and really, his speed and any everything isn't that top level. So not a big fan of him, but I see his name around up there. Uh, Curtis Weaver. Should be a three technique. Now, I'm not knocking his uh, production. He definitely, first off, he has 34 career sacks in 40 games. So he obviously gets up there. And just the fact that he was standing up, playing in space, all that. Again, 6'3", 265. Chase Young is 6'5", 265. Completely different body types. And so Weaver looks different out there doing it, but he did it. He definitely was competent. I wouldn't say he was great, but he was competent, moving in space, actually a little better, more aware in coverage than some of these other guys. Not to say he couldn't do any of that, but he's best as a three technique. The way he's built, he, he's not a guy that should be standing up playing outside linebacker. Like, and at 6'3", I, I really... And there's a lot of 6'3 guys. I don't see him in a, even front being on the edge. Uh, I would say best to get some more weight and move him to the inside. But I like them. I like this ability. Uh, yeah, oh, almost everything I like. I don't think he's like super fast. I don't think he has great lean on the edge. But I think on the interior, he'd be really hard to handle. Uh Bradley Anye, I believe. Anye? Uh, Anye? From Utah. Um, 6'3", 265. It's a lot of people that's apparently 6'3", 265. So I really liked him. Um, uh, Weaver was second team All-American AP. Anye's third team AP All-American, by the way. So I really liked Anye, and I, I talked to one of my friends. Well, I was watching... I think I was watching the USC tackle Austin Jackson. So this was when I first started. And I was like, who's this dude on Utah? And so, again, you get a glimpse and you have a picture. But upon watching him more closely, he's definitely got holes in this game. I, I think uh, I did see him once or twice show really great lean around the edge. But most of the time I didn't see it. It was just above average. Uh, he was standing a little too high. And he's 6'3". So... That's tough to do, but he was standing almost straight up, uh, and I just didn't see great lean out of him. Now, his hands are something to talk about. He has very violent, very quick, very masterful hands, but there's a little bit of lack of strength um, in some areas, and there's a, definitely a lack of lean on the edge, and there's also a lack of speed, but I, I think he has potential he, I don't know if he has as much potential as I once thought he did, but I do like him as a um, as a prospect. I, I just think he has a lot of good pieces, but he needs to put it together. Uh, yeah, so that's that's really it for the guys I want to touch on. So, um, yeah, so let's jump over to the real grade. We're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles today. And once again, this is when I look at the draft from three years ago. Uh, my philosophy, it takes three years to grade a draft, also takes three years to grade a player. 
And so I like to go back and look at the real grade instead of grading them the night of uh, or grading them after the rookie season, which I see some people doing now, which is better than grading them the night of, but three years. So Philadelphia Eagles 2017, we have eight players. Uh, Actually, let me just go through Derek Barnett, first round pick, uh, still with the team, rotational guy, Uh, Sidney Jones. Second round pick still with the team, starter. Uh, Rasul Douglas, third round pick still with the team, get some starting tick. Um, Mac Hollins, fourth round pick, no longer with the team with the Dolphins. Humphrey, or DJ Pumphrey, excuse me, uh, fourth round pick, no longer in the league. Sheldon Gibson, fifth round pick, no longer in the league. Nate Gary, fifth round pick, starting linebacker for the Eagles. And Elijah Qual, six-round pick, no longer in the league. So, we got eight players. Out of the eight, four are still with the team. Out of the four that are on the team, they all have significant time on the field. So, that's good. Out of the four that aren't with the team, three are out of the league. And only one is still in the uh, active roster. And so, not bad. So, out of the four that aren't. You got one, two of them are a fourth round pick. One's a fifth round, one's a sixth round. Fifth and sixth round, not going to hold too much against you. The two fourth round picks, now again, I always talk about that's that's right on the edge of being premium picks. So a fourth round running back that didn't, I don't even think he made it more in the season, that's a, that's a hit. I won't say a huge hit, but that's a hit. Mac Hollins was a little bit of a, um, I wouldn't say a reach at the fourth round, but a little bit. I don't think many people had them um, that good, but um, a little bit of a hit, uh, but he's still in the league, so I'm not going to go too hard on that. And yeah, so there we go. So you got big points for Nate Gary in the fifth round becoming a starter, especially with a position change. Now, Derek Barnett, top 15 guy, really loved him coming out. Think he's decent, but not great. Hasn't had huge impact and, you know, he doesn't always officially star but he definitely plays a lot of snaps just don't think he's uh top 15 production so far Sidney Jones we know he had the injury was supposed to be a top five player hasn't been great hasn't been that great but still starts but we know the Eagles secondaries and shambles all the time and Rasul Douglas kind of same thing kind of there so four people that play but aren't great players by any stretch um so if you're asking me we got four like i said that uh aren't with the team three of them out of the league one uh with the dolphins four still on the team all contributors none really great uh i give this a c plus that's what i'll give it so go to the comment section let me know what you think about the Eagles draft. What would you grade it? Uh, let me know what you think about the edge rushers. Anybody in particular you're excited about? Anybody I didn't speak about that you think would be really good? And second round, hopefully I'll get to more, but that's where I'm at right now. So uh, thanks for listening. Go to, Like I said, go to the comment section and get the comment or the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, and thank you for listening.